Well, hello everybody. And Michael J. Burns here, the Reverend from Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Oklahoma, formerly a pastor in New York, Long Island, New York for 35 years, now in a new phase of life and ministry. And we're broadcasting from, as I said, Tulsa, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And we're coming to you live right now on Facebook. We have three Facebook pages, but my account by my name, Michael J. Burns, that's the main account we're broadcasting on. We're rebroadcasting on the other two Facebook accounts we have. Plus, we're also broadcasting on, uh, rebroadcasting, I should say, on Getter, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, on YouTube, on Truth Social. And, uh, we're reaching out in as many ways as possible. And so we're coming to you now with a continuation of our teaching that we do live here. Uh, on the dynamic duo of grace and faith. And we're going to be talking about that some here tonight. Let me encourage you to go to our website right here and visit our website, uh, mjbministries.org. I know you'll find many helpful resources there, uh, including our free audios that we have right there on the website. We also have uh, our YouTube channel link. And then we have our e-newsletter signed up that goes out on the first of each month. Uh, we're getting ready to send out the April 1st newsletter coming up here in about uh, August, about nine days. We're still working on it, but we'll have it finished in time. And then, of course, we have the archives of our newsletter as well. In the past uh, year and a half or two years almost that we've been doing it, those are there for you to enjoy as well. And, you know, we just are about putting out the Word of God, the Word of faith, uh, the Word of the power of the Holy Ghost. And uh, we're traveling as the Lord is opening doors. I'll be traveling in April uh, to Lake Church in Manford in uh, in uh, May, the end of May. I'll be leaving to go to uh, Long Island, New York, where I originally pastored for 35 years. And then in June, I'll still be in New York ministering there up until about the 11th or 12th. And so we're looking forward to our journey, our trip out there. We're still looking for a few more uh, pastors who would be interested in having us come. That could be in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or Pennsylvania. Uh, we'd certainly like the opportunity to come and add value to your church and to your leadership and the team that uh, supports you as the leader there. And so we're looking forward to that opportunity. Anyway, let's have a word of prayer as we get into the teaching tonight on uh, the dynamic duo of grace and faith. Heavenly Father, tonight we are coming before you and we're coming to you in faith, believing that as we teach the word of God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that you are going to think to my mind and speak to my lips and my vocal cords to these, your people who are assembled here. And Father God, you're going to cause their ears to listen, their minds to be open, and their hearts to be receptive to the things of the Word and of the mighty Holy Spirit of God. Father, I love you today. I thank you that you love me, and I thank you that you love the people that are tuned in here to watch this broadcast tonight. And I'm asking, Father, today that there'd be supernatural evidence of your Word that would be confirmed with signs, wonders, miracles, and diverse gifts of the Holy Ghost, as Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we thank you, Father God, tonight uh, for everything that will be said, done, revealed, and manifested. We covenant with you now to give you and you alone all the glory, all the praise, the honor, and the thanks for it all in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everyone say it. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Well, the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Praise God. And so we're going to get into this teaching tonight. And I'd like you, if you have your Bibles, uh, to turn with me over to James, the first chapter. Before we go there, I just want to remind you this series that we're doing right now here in God's Healing Word on Michael J. Burns. Uh, it's called the Dynamic Duo of Grace and Faith. And we've already been talking much about this. As a matter of fact, yesterday uh, we spoke to you regarding uh, the sovereignty of God and how we said that it actually 
is one of the most dangerous teachings that has really ever gone into the church. And the only reason that is, is not that God is not a sovereign God. He certainly is, but the church has changed the meaning. The modern day church and even the church over the years has changed the meaning of sovereignty as meaning that God was in control of everything. And uh, yesterday we gave you several scriptures that if God is sovereign, why are they even included in the Bible? And so go back and watch yesterday's program if you haven't seen it yet. I know you'll enjoy it tremendously. We talked about what the real meaning of being sovereign is from the dictionary. It simply means to be the supreme one, and he is supreme. Nowhere in the definition that you can find in any dictionary, Greek or otherwise, you cannot even find anything that will say that sovereignty means God is in control. Listen, God is dealing with us not in his sovereignty. God is dealing with man in his grace through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have that promise from God in our day and our hour. You know, it's interesting if you're a King James person, and I certainly have been a King James person, but I do read other translations and teach from other translations of the Bible. But if you read the King James Bible, you'll never find the word sovereignty or sovereign anywhere in the New Testament or even in the Old Testament for that matter. Now, speaking of kings that existed, they would be sovereign over the region that they ruled, but no one does it say that. I think in the book of Revelation, in the Amplified Bible, it talks about a sovereign of the ages. But if you go through the scriptures, uh, you'll not see that. Now, if you look at the NIV, the New International Version, everywhere it says Lord God, it'll have the word sovereign in the NIV. But I disagree with that being that, that God is sovereign in the sense that he's in control of everything. If it means that he's sovereign and that he's supreme, he's preeminent, he's the number one uh, that we absolutely should look to, then absolutely he's the one that is in that definition sovereign. But he's not sovereign when the definition is stated that he is in control of everything. Now, we talked about grace and faith. And one thing we said clearly is that grace is God's part and faith is our part. And we made this statement to you that the grace of God is the same toward every person. There is no difference when it comes to healing and every blessing that God has given. That would include forgiveness of sins and salvation. But God did it without your participation. God did it without your help or your assistance in any way. He did it through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we get in on that grace that Jesus did by faith. That's why Ephesians 2, 8, 9 it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. So by grace... Through faith, we are saved. Now, you can say the same thing. By grace, through faith, we were healed. By grace, through faith, we received the provision that we need as we put a hand to work, as we invest, as we do the things that the Bible instructs us to do. We will prosper. It is all by grace, and it is through faith. Now, we said this here. Uh, that faith, and this is an important statement I want to make again right now, faith is our positive response to the word, to the finished work that God has already done for us in Christ. Listen to that statement again. Faith is our positive response to what God has already done for us in Christ, in the grace that Jesus accomplished for us. You know, when he hung on the cross, one of the seven sayings of Jesus is that he said, it is finished, meaning that the Old Testament is now ended. This New Testament, this new covenant had now begun and was about to literally begin when Jesus was raised from the dead. And you and I are living under this new and better covenant, the New Testament that's founded upon better promises, Hebrews 8 verse 6 tells us. And so we're no longer living under the Old Testament law. Now, God still requires us to live 
uh, want and desires for us, that we have the potential in us to live holy, to live righteous, to do the things that are pleasing in his sight. It's not in our own physical strength, but it's in Christ who is in us, the hope of glory, who lives the Christ life through us from the inside out. He helps us to live as God would have us to live, but we're not doing it to try to make God pleased with us. God is already pleased with us. God already loves us. God cannot love you and me any more than he does right now. Now, you can love God more or less, depending on which side of the street you're on on that issue. But here's the fact is that you can love God more or you can love God less. God's love for you will never diminish. It will never even increase. It's the same from the moment uh, Jesus died on the cross for you and you accepted him as your Lord and as your Savior. So I'm going to say this to you. Stop trying to please God. Remember, faith is our positive response to what God has already done for us in Christ. I don't care if it's your faith, if it's your prayers, if it's your praise and worship, if it's your giving, if it's your fasting, if it's your witnessing to other people. Those things are not you trying to get God to respond to you, to heal you, to bless you. That's not what those things are about. Those things that I just mentioned, that whether it's your faith, prayer, praise and worship, giving, praise and worship, or even soul winning, those things are your response to what God in Christ has already done for you. And that's when many, many people are missing it. They're trying to do things to become acceptable uh, to God. Amen. Now, again, we want to just say this to you, that unfortunately, the church world has defined the word sovereignty completely different from what it originally meant to mean that God is in control of everything. Now, if you have accepted that as a... Uh, as something that you're saying, well, I believe that's true for me. I believe that God is sovereign, that he is in control of everything. I'm going to just tell you very bluntly right now that you're deceived, that you have accepted a doctrine, a teaching that is, I believe, a doctrine of devils. Because even though God is sovereign, meaning he's supreme, he's preeminent, that he is uh, uh, omniscient, um, um, omnipresent, and that he's omnipotent, he is all of those things. But in none of those definitions do we see that God says, I'm in control. Again, God is dealing with us, not in sovereignty. God is dealing with his people and mankind in his grace, and he wants them to, to receive that grace. I'm looking at the wrong camera here. I don't know why I'm doing that. But uh, anyway, that's what I want to say to you right now. Now, go with me over to James chapter 1. This is where we basically left off uh, yesterday. And I like to read these scriptures and have you read along with me. My brethren, James wrote, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Notice the Bible tells us here that we're to count it all joy when you go through different kinds of tests, temptations, or trials. This is something that many people haven't really learned to do. As a matter of fact, the word, uh, I heard one lady years ago over in New Jersey, I was at a service and she taught about this. And uh, she made this statement in the Greek about counting it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, tests, or trials. That, that, could, that does mean actually to literally throw a party. Count it all joy. Throw a party. And uh, her and her husband, she said, were going through a very difficult time. And uh, when they were going through this difficult time, they decided that they would act on James chapter 1, verse number 2. They would have, throw a party. So they got all these. She got out and got these party hats and uh, noisemakers that you'd spin and blow a whistle to blow a, these things are making all kinds of party type noises. And they invited some fellow Christian friends over to have what they called a praise party. I like that idea, throwing a praise party in the middle of your difficult situations or circumstances, beginning to have a celebration where you're praising God based on what Christ has already done 
for you. Can I get an amen from somebody? So we need to learn to do what the scripture says. Call, count it all joy, throw a party when you fall into divers, temptations, tests, and trials. And let me show you what verse 3 goes on to say here. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now, I don't have the scripture here, but you can look it up over in the uh, letter to the Hebrews chapter 6. I believe it's in verse 12. The, and the Bible says that, that we would not be lazy or slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And so you need to understand that patience is also a part of your receiving from God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that there are three things in 1 Corinthians 13 that remain, faith, hope, and love. Now, uh, faith, of course, is how we receive from the grace of God. But uh, hope is the, the, the goal of faith. It's faith's goal. And love is actually faith's protector. Love of God, the love of God will protect your faith. But patience is faith's endurance. It helps you to be able to endure. Now, unfortunately today, many Christians have formed wrong beliefs, listen to me now, mostly because of what they have been taught by other ministers. You could say that we have been prejudiced to believe certain things that are just not true. Now, this is exactly what I want to bring out here today, is that we have accepted things as being true that the scriptures indicate that are not true. Now, there would be no honest person who's watching me right now who would have read James 2, chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, and come to the conclusion that they've come to without having heard the opinion of some preacher who spoke on these very verses that I just read in James. Now, here's the thing that James said. He said, let patience have a perfect work. The trying of your faith work with patience, is what he said in verse number three. But here's what you need to understand, is that trials, tests, and temptations do not give you patience. I want to say that again. Trials, tests, and temptations do not give you patience. You say, yeah, but Pastor Mike, uh, James chapter 1, verse 3 says that the trying of your faith work with patience. Here's what that actually means. It means that trials will give you the opportunity for patience to be developed in you and to work through you. Trials will give you the opportunity to develop patience and to work patience in your life. So they don't give you patience because if they did, well, people would be the most patient people in the world who would go through difficulties in life. Let me read to you from Romans, the 15th chapter, and verse number four. This is a great verse of scripture here. For whatsoever things were written aforetime or in the past, they were written for our learning, our learning, Paul wrote here, that we, through patience, and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now, there are many different uh, aspects to the Christian life. Faith is obviously one of them. Hope is another. Love is another. And we talked here about patience being another virtue that we have in our life. And there are many other things like excellence and oh, holy living and all that. But let me give you a really, really, really good definition. I have it written here on the screen. And you can read along with me. Patience is faith over a prolonged period of time. It is the ability to endure and not worry or be careful once faith has been exercised. Wow, that's a good definition, isn't it? And I hope that you'll begin to understand that that's what patience really is. It is faith that remains over a prolonged period of time. It patience is the ability to endure and not worry or be careful or full of care once faith has been exercised. That is what patience is, and we ought to be living by it.
every single day of our lives. Now, when you come over to this verse of scripture in Romans, the eighth chapter, and we're going to begin to read in verse number 26. Let me just see why that, there it is. This scripture is, of course, a very popular scripture among charismatic people, and I would say that it should be for every believer in Christ, whether you're charismatic or not. But it says here, likewise, the Spirit, this is the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for, and, uh, we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit itself, or literally himself, makes intercession for us, notice this, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now look at this here in verse 28, when this is the verse that most of us are familiar with. Uh, and we know that all things work together for good to them that are that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, listen, verse 28, many people just quote that in the difficulties that they're going through in life, that this working, this is working together for my good because I love God. Well, actually, you have to apply verse 26 and verse 27 for verse 28 to become a reality in your life. You have to spend time, as it says here, the Holy Spirit helping you in your infirmities. And let me give you the definition for what it is, what infirmities are, all right? Uh, let me first, before I give you that definition, let me share this with you. And I believe that this be a, a real help to you here today. Whenever you go through times of weakness, or times of uh, or the inability to produce results, you have to remember something, and this is really a key here to living in victory. You have to remember that you have a guide inside of you who will lead you out and into a place of strength and victory. Now, I'm speaking of the Holy Spirit and the precious gift of speaking or praying in a prayer language of other tongues. You have to begin to realize that you have help already when you're asking God for help. God is saying, I've already given you the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Now, there are many Christians, and I'm going to just say this, and I'm going to be as gentle as I can be in this, but there are many Christians today that are not, uh, and who have not yet received this subsequent experience after they were born again, and yes, they are born again, they are on their way to heaven, but they have rejected this great gift that came on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, known as speaking in other tongues. Now, you need to say to yourself, why am I rejecting it? Just like we said that people have been taught by others wrong things that we've adopted in our life as being true, you cannot afford to limit your relationship with God to just the born again experience. Certainly, that's the door, that's the beginning, that's where it all starts. But God wants you to recognize that, yes, you have the Holy Spirit in you, but in Acts 1 8, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come up on you, up on you, upon you, up and on you. In other words, He's in you in the new birth when you were accepted Christ, but He now wants to come up and clothe you where you would be, what the Bible calls, endued with power in Luke 24 and 49, that you'd be endued with power from on high. This is the power that's in your spirit, but that's the work of the Holy Spirit in the salvation, in the born-again experience. But now he wants to cut, rise up out of your spirit and clothe you with supernatural power. Now that is evidenced in its initial uh, happening in your life by speaking in tongues. Someone says, yeah, pastor, but doesn't it say in the scriptures that, you know, not everybody's going to speak in tongues? That's talking about a public assembly meeting where someone will give a public message in tongues and somebody will interpret. Now, you have to understand something, and this is 
a major, major key to understanding and also lacking it is a major key to misunderstanding this. See, there is an element of speaking in tongues from earth to heaven. That's the place where every born again believer should and can speak in tongues and communicate it with God specifically. That's what 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Now, that's speaking from earth to heaven. But there are times in a public assembly, sometimes it can be just two people one-on-one. -on -one. It depends what the situation is. But where you're speaking in tongues from heaven to earth, and there must be an interpretation. That's where God is speaking and to us. And the reason God uses tongues in a public assembly is to get the attention of the people. He even talks about it, Paul does in 1 Corinthians 14, as being like a trumpet among the military, how when it's blown, it, the people are listening for the, the sound of the trumpet in order to know what to do next. Well, it's the same in a public assembly, there is the public use of tongues, which is speaking from heaven to earth, and there must be an interpretation of that. But there's also, when you're speaking from earth to heaven, that's every believer's opportunity to speak uh, to God in those divine secrets or mysteries, as the scripture talks to us about. And so we have to understand here today, my friends, that speaking in tongues is of great value. And if you are rejecting that, then you are limiting your relationship with God. Now, you could disagree with me all day long. You could say, you know, the tide doesn't come up on the shore on the coast of the United States every morning. But you know something? You could say that with, a, with great affirmation, and you could say it with great passion, and you could disagree with what I said, that the, the tide does come up on the shore. Say, oh, no, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't matter how much you say it doesn't come up on the shore. It doesn't stop it from coming up on the shore. It still comes up on the shore, praise God, whether you believe it or whether you don't. And whether you believe that speaking in tongues is for every Christian or not doesn't make it untrue. It is for you. It is for every believer. And he's already inside you. But now you need that. You have the within experience of the Holy Spirit, but you need to have the upon experience where he comes up from your spirit, which has been born again, and on you, clothing you, and doing you with supernatural power, with the evidence, the initial evidence, not the only evidence, but the initial evidence of speaking in a heavenly language. It's not from your mind. It's not uh, the language is necessarily of other people's nations and things. It could be at times. But it will be your unique prayer language between you and your heavenly father. You know, I never thought that my, well, you know, I see parents, I see little kids saying stuff. I notice that mothers and fathers know exactly what their little babies are saying, what they're wanting, when they want their rattle, they want their pacifier, they want to eat, they want their diaper change. Moms and dads have an uncanny ability to understand a language that other people are looking and say, is that what that baby is saying right now? Well, the truth of the matter is, my friend, God knows exactly what you're saying in tongues. It might seem like babble to you or even those who criticize it, make fun of it, but it doesn't make it untrue. God understands exactly what you're saying. And then there are other dimensions of it that we're not going to talk about right now. But uh, we'll, maybe we'll talk about that sometime in the future. Listen, if you've never had or received the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, then I want you, and you're ready to receive, I want you to say to God the Father right now, Father, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues right now. I ask that the Holy Spirit who's in me because Jesus is my Lord I have been born again. I ask the Holy Spirit to come up and on me and clothe me with power. And as he does, I will begin to speak in other tongues. Come on, lift your hands right now. 
O Shabam Brikedeni, Lemene Bokusa, Membrakadani, Rabasi Kriatoso, Rabaki Ranakam Riendosa, Mediakara, Zelo, Brea Tosa Bukuchi Giliana, Rahasi Kieta Dovichadoma, Masom Brakelevidikia, be filled with the Spirit of Almighty God right now. If you've not received it, if you have, begin to lift your voice and utilize that prayer language that's been laying dormant in your heart and let it out right now. Let the Holy Ghost come out right now and release that power. That's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And he's in you and he wants to be released through that supernatural heavenly prayer language. Amen. Well, glory to God. I believe you receive. Glory to God. Pray in tongues, sing in tongues, do it all because it's something that God wants you uh, to uh, enjoy. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now I'm I'm Michael J. Burns, and I am uh, I was a former pastor of Real Church in Long Island, New York, but now I've started a new ministry called MJB Ministries, and uh, we're very excited about it here, based out of Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we have many things available on our website, which you can see right here, MJBMinistries.org. You know, we've been going through uh, some challenges here because we've been asking people who are being fed and nourished by these broadcasts to help us. And so as a result, we've gotten very little to any response. Only a couple of people support us on a regular monthly basis, about maybe five people or so. But we need you who are here to help us. We have some people that give once a year a big, a big check. We just got one the other day for $500 that went right out. But we have to say that we need regular monthly givers to help us. And I'm just wondering, why is it that people like you are not responding? You might say, well, I already give to my church. Well, you should tithe to your church. You should give offerings there as well. But I'm telling you, if you're getting fed the word of God here, we don't charge anybody for it. But I'm asking you to help us financially. Go to mjbministries.org forward slash giving today. Now, just don't add the word today to it, just mjbministries.org forward slash giving. And I believe if you'll do that, that uh, God will bless you for it. But I ask you to give what you don't have. We're only asking you to give what you can give. Do it in faith today. We're believing God. Our budget is 800 plus dollars a month. And then we have some other things we plan to do this year, which is we want to published two books that have already been written, and we want to do this music project of all original songs. It'd be our second project that we want to do. But even though this will cost thousands of dollars, we can't do it unless people like you step up and help us. So please go to mjpministries.org forward slash giving today, and I believe if you will, that you will be greatly blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want to thank you for joining me today. We're going to end the show right here. We'll be back tomorrow at 9 p.m. on Thursday. With God, see the word, we'll continue teaching about the dynamic duo of grace and faith. And I hope to see you tomorrow on the broadcast. We love you so much. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, please go and make your contribution and become a giver and a prayer partner with us here at MJB Ministries. I'm Michael J. Burns. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.